So, as part of the, the attunement, that led to extra functions that I got when I was receiving the training for the Brennan Healing Science. And when we do Brennan Healing Science, or any form of energy healing, you need to be able to reverse the levels, those levels that are associated with the human aura, which are, have a frequency of their own right. To enable you to move around, affect healing of the chakras at different levels, remove different parts of the chakras, replace them, do spying, cleansing, remove astral entities that have attached themselves to you, uh, affect changes to the etheric template and the etheric body to repair the physical body, and, and do um, modifications to organs and things. And during this time, we were moving up and down these levels, and, and you know, we had sp specific lessons in, in able to do this. I noticed I could go higher, and as I went higher, um, I found I was experiencing different different levels to the human body. And at this point, my, my teacher reprimanded me severely for not being grounded. And uh, this happened quite a few times because really the course content only worked on seven levels. But I recognized that there were these 10 levels associated with the human form. And, and they got a level of structure. And the first three levels were consistent with what we were being taught. And they were to do with the, the physical, the physical body. And rather than the fourth level being the intermediate and astral, and that being the mixing pot between the spiritual and the physical worlds, there were actually four. And they were more spiritual physical than, than intermediate and astral. And as I looked further and got more adept, the other three, the eighth, ninth, and tenth, I noticed, were more spiritual. So the human body exists on three planes at the same time. Physical, intermediate spiritual, or spiritual physical, and purely spiritual. And as I progressed further, and I invented uh, a little methodology that is, is in the book, by the way, so, um, and we might be able to use it later on as part of this, the end of this lecture, to enable me to move further than those 10 levels. And as I, as I did this, I found that there was 14 levels associated with the, the physical universe. And that those 14 levels are encompassed by one bigger frequency band, and I'll, I'll come into that later. So I was getting quite adept at this, um, this moving up and down the frequencies and at least staying at 14. And then one day I found I could go higher than 14 to 15. And at this point, I started to meet other entities. Um, these are just a few of them that I met and there's been others since. So the first entities I contact was, well, the first one was Byron, um, who was called something else. So I'm going to go into them in some detail as, as I go through. Then I perceived and ended up communicating with some aliens in Crete. We have a little holiday home in, on the Cretan Hills. And during one, one meditation session, I established there was, again, otherworldly energies there. And when I started to focus my attention on, on the hillsides, there was you know, extraterrestrials there. And then there's the OM. Uh, another set of entities that I now know pervade the known multiverse. But also, I found with patience and with more meditation and more experience and using the, the arbitrary method I was using, which is quite mechanical, I have to add, and took quite a bit of time, I managed to go above the level 100 that was in my mind. It's an arbitrary level that I think that um, anybody can use as a, as a, as a figure. And that level led me to a larger entity, a much larger entity, that announced itself as being the source entity, God. And it, it started to have some dialogue with me, which was you know, fantastic from my perspective. I thought I'd made it. And then I found I could go higher. <laughs> and as I went higher, I went into another plane, a completely different plane, and established that there was another entity above that, and that was called the origin. So the first entity, Byron, okay, was an entity I met on the 27th level, and I was moving up and down these levels. I was trying to use either trap doors to get up there or a mental lift to move myself up and down different levels. And I got to the 27th level and I met this entity called Byron. Now, Byron 
um, initially tried to scare me off. I shouldn't be here, he said. You're from Earth. You're not supposed to go above the third level, let alone the 27th level. What are you doing here? And it read my mind and presented itself as a dragon. So I initially called it the dragon entity, and it kept trying to shoo me off. Uh, wrong. I'm not worried about things like that, so I kept on going. And eventually, it, uh, it started to work with me and started to tell me what it really was. And I established that it, it exists on a planet, in a galaxy, in a completely different universe to mankind. And that, as a result of that, he experiences he, a, a level of physicality, but, a com but relevant to his dimensionality, his permutation of space. And his bodily form is metamorphic. And it's metamorphic because he changes his bodily form relevant to the type of work he's doing. And I experienced this again when he, was, when he called himself the, the um, well, I, when I called him the, the dragon entity because he, he, he had this dragon form and he thought the dragons would scare me off. And then eventually he, he adopted a more humanoid form because he realized that I wasn't going to move away and the humanoid form would be uh, more congenial to our communications. Now, Byron's race are a collective race. Although they have individuality, they, are, they work for a collective, for the collective, to make sure the collective evolves. And what's more, they work with the planet or the area of local density that they exist and work around to help that evolve as well. So their work is to do with working together in evolution. Now, one year, my wife and I went on a holiday in Crete, and the, the area that we, we live in is, uh, is just over, over here. We have a little place there, okay? And there's a wonderful roof area where I can sit on and just be. And it's great. You just sit there and be. You can watch all the birds flying around, the insects flying around, and you know, you look at them all and you think, wow, they've got, they've got purpose, this lot. They're just, they're just working with nature. And I was absorbing nature and being part of this. And as I just was absorbing nature and being part of this, I tuned in a bit deeper, and I found that there was energy signatures that weren't of the area. So I tuned my perception to the area and found that there was what I can only describe as balconies or bases and areas where, where craft could, could come and go. And so all these mountain paces here were surrounded by balconies and, and little buildings and, and stuff and all, all around here as well. And that it was full of basically alien technology. So I contacted these aliens and I said, well, what are you doing here? This is quite a backward little island. We've, I mean, no, Greece is, uh, is not particularly well uh, civilized in, in some of the island areas. And, and they said, well, we've come here to experience and understand and, and, and observe mankind working with nature. And the older Greeks work with nature. Well, the younger Greeks don't so much because they're more involved with materialism. But the older Greeks work with nature still. And that's important. Because if you're working with nature, you're working with the source entity. So that's what they were there for, to, work, to watch mankind working with nature. So I asked some further questions as to why they were here and what they were doing. And they said, well, we, can, we travel between the stars and the galaxies by using a method of frequency level translation. They move through the frequencies. And to do that, once they've, they've, they've moved, they use their mental intention to allow them to travel from place to place. And they can do that because the frequencies and dimensions, in some instances, are overlapped. Or they can use a mechanical energetic construct to force the issue for them. And I'll come into this business about them being overlapped or not overlapped later. But they use entities to make them do these dimensional jumps to move around. But what they did say is that they use an energetic vehicle to help them to come down to our frequency. Because when they come down to our frequency, they lose function. And again, I'll come into this later, because we lose function as well as a result of us being incarnate within the physical. So one of the other entities that I contacted was an entity called Hum. Now, that's not his real name. I just could not 
write or understand his real name. So we settled on Hum, okay? And <laughs> an arbitrary name. And Hum is one of the Um, and the Um pervade the multiverse. So he's, he's, he's one of the Um. And he's beloved, by, he's beloved of the Um. The Um love him, and he loves the Um. They exist in a, in a love-like state. And he was sent to assist me in my early dialogues with the source entity and the origin to maintain and establish a robust link, which is, which is pretty much there right now, actually. In those days, it was quite difficult for me to, to get there without probably half an hour of meditation. But these days, the link is already there. And Hum was there to help with that, help with that and maintain that link. Now, the Um exist in the heaven levels, uh, right close to the source entity. And in fact, they're a really old race of, of, of energetic light beings. Um, now, when the, the source entity created the, the entities that, that, that exist within the multiverse it created, and it cast out its energy to create these entities, um, you'll read in the book that it didn't quite have its attention placed in the right place at the right time. Hence, we have different kingdoms of... Um, of entity. But the Om were created first as part of this, this, this casting out of energy. And as a result, they, they, they are very old and very wise and, and very loving. And they don't need to incarnate at all. Some of them do, at great expense to themselves, but they do it to help the evolution of, 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 the, of the multiverse. And although they, are, they pervade the multiverse, and are part of the background of the essence of the multiverse, they've come to Earth to help the Earth evolve and thus evolve. And the Earth is quite, in fact, is very important, and I'll come to that later, because one of the things that um, you will, estab will, will establish is that although we talk about the Earth ascending, there's much more at stake. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly summarize before I move on. So I've had uh, many spiritual experiences during my, my mid-teens, which resulted in my, my awakening being delayed and then reactivated later. My study of energy healing and uh, Reiki and Brendan healing science triggered the awakening process in my early 40s. And through the visit to Sweden, which incidentally ended up with a five-year commitment to go there, and I received subsequent top-ups, as it were, during those five years, resulted in me enabling my, my, my spiritual vision and, and faculties to be more, more, more awakened and allowed me to communicate with those entities that we've just discussed, such as Bar and the, the aliens and, and Hum and the Um. And that also allowed me to swiftly progress to me communicating on the very high frequencies which resulted in my communication with the source entity and the origin. And the rest of this lecture really goes into some of the information, some of the data that I've accrued over the years in, in my communication with them.